Okay, now let's see. Am I on? Am I on? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? This worship service brought to you by some unnamed telecommunication company until they give us money for it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome one and all the worship on Pentecost Sunday, the day when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit, the fulfillment of the promise that Christ proclaimed, saying here, you know, I will not leave you abandoned or orphaned. And Jesus sends, and God the Father sends the Holy Spirit. Welcome as we celebrate this fact. And today at 10 o'clock, we get an extra special celebration of it because we get a baptism. Woohoo! James David Clark. All right. The, you know, the blessing was, you know, the font not having been used for a little while. There was a part of me that was a little nervous, thinking that things had dried out. And so I was going to turn on the water and it was going to be a fountain instead of a font. You know, but hey, you know, God is good all the time. But welcome one and all to worship. <clears throat> now, there will be some other instructions for our presence and our gathering here today and things going forward. I'll give you more of that. If you were looking for prepackaged communion, nope, don't need it. I'll explain that a little bit later, but please make sure, especially for you gathered in, in the space today, there were three pieces for worship. I mean, you can follow along on the screens, obviously, but also there was a bulletin. There was the insert for music that has the songs, unless you can sing, and there is the order for service for the baptism. Okay. So please make sure you have those things. For those of you joining us at home, welcome. Uh, please invite you, especially on this day of Pentecost, to light a candle or something else. Yes, it helps set aside the space, make it a little more special, but it also reminds us of God's enduring presence, the tongues of fire of Pentecost, and that baptismal charge to let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And if you are joining us for communion, please have those elements handy as well. Now, as a congregation, we, you know, we call ourselves to invite all people in Christ to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. And so there's many different ministries that we've done, that we do as part of it. Obviously, with COVID, it makes life a little bit more entertaining. Uh, but one of them that is starting back up is Sunday Dollars. And Karen Johnson, who leads that ministry team, has sent in this video, letting us know of something awesome that is already happening. Good morning. It has been a very long time since I have been able to share a story about a Sunday Dollars project with you. I was contacted in April by Joshua. He's the principal of Butterfield Elementary School. He asked if we would consider purchasing books for students at the book fair as we have done in the past for many years. I said, absolutely. I was so glad he felt we could do this safely. This project allows students who would need assistance in paying for books to be able to choose books for their summer reading. Six students participated, and each of those students was able to get four books. It is a buy one, get one free sale, so it's a great time to do this for the students. These students were so excited when they came into the library and found out that they would be able to choose four books from this book fair. You can see their smiling faces on the large poster that is now hanging in the narthex. Be sure to check it out. The funding for Sunday Dollars projects comes from the $1 bills that are placed in the offering plates. Projects involve members and friends of the congregation interacting with the neighbors we are serving. Thank you so much for continuing to support this ministry. Okay, Let but into Sunday dollars. Now there's certain rules that are involved with Sunday dollars. It's not just like a grant writing thing. It involves interactivity, which needless to say, COVID has made a real difficulty with. But various groups they've helped with, um, the gap houses, the, 
the, the, the many, you know, the multiple youth uh, uh, foster homes in the area. We've done things for buying shoes and all that. But one of the big things that we've done, and this is what she was talking about, is Butterfield Elementary. Uh, we helped them out with their books sale and making sure that children have books. And so I just invite you, for those of you who are gathered here in the narthex, as you walked in, there's this big bulletin board that's right by the door to the office. Take a look there. You will see pictures and some information about that uh, that allows you to see some of the lives that were touched and impacted. So yes, if you have dollar bills you throw in there, they're obviously, they all get accounted for. Uh, there's even an electronic giving tag now for them uh, that you can use uh, you know, on the electronic giving. There's that as well. But also stay tuned. If you're interested in doing some of the interactivity, working with the book sales, helping out with some of the school supplies or the other things that they do, please let us know or let Karen know, because as we go forward and people are vaccinated and things are a little bit more open, get involved. It's, it's for those of you who have done it, it's been an amazing experience. And so I invite you to do that. One of the other uh, groups that we work out of our generosity and reaching out is a lot on 22nd Street. Uh, you'll see up there a list of some of the non-perishable items that we're collecting and some of the other items for it. The lot on 22nd Street is a ministry that helps with people who are food insecure in the area around 22nd Street um, and the homeless population. Uh, we you know, have turned the nursery into a big collection site, you know, kind of like a faith nursery uh, for some of these different uh, groups and uh, collections. And so uh, from nine to three, Monday through Thursday, when the office is open, that door is open. If you have things to drop off and you're busy at that point in time, contact the office. We'll make sure someone can get you in. Now, we've made some changes uh, and we've made some advancements at, with you know, the new information that have come out and some next steps that we're going to do concerning our COVID precautions. Uh, and so a couple of things. One, you may have noticed that you're in this space. For those of you at 10 o'clock, you're here. You're not over in Warrior Hall. We're here. Uh, and so welcome. Yes, you can still sing. Yes, we still ask you to mask. June 6th, masks become optional. Now, please remember, folks, that the reason for masks and vaccinations is not only just for your safety, but also for the safety of your neighbor. You know, some guy said 2,000 years ago that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. And part of that is making sure we care for one another. And there are people within the congregation and people who are, you know, that are closely tied to members of the congregation who are immunocompromised for a number of reasons. And so just please be mindful and careful in those kinds of things. And if you haven't gotten vaccinated, please do. You know, it's just a wonderful thing to do for one another. So the June 6th, we will start. Um, you know, where masks can be optional. Uh, but we do ask you to keep registering. It's more of a, uh, an attendance thing as well. There's an online link that you can do, uh, but also if you just come in, just please give your name to the usher and they can add your name to it. So that way we have it because we're not passing cue pads or anything else like that right now. Communion also is you come up front. And so you'll be given instructions at that time. Uh, one of the things, you know, Luther talked about the fact that when you receive communion, you make a basket out of your hands because it's the cradle that held the Christ child. So when you come forward up the center aisle, when you are released, you come up, hold your hands out. I will, I will drop the wafer in, and then whichever side you're seated on, you go to the either side. Uh, there will be, um, there's a grape juice and a wine that'll be out there for you uh, to pick up and take on your own. Uh, as you go, there's garbage following, um, you know, that you can, you can drop the cup into. If you need gluten-free wafers, you need to let me know as soon as possible. But there's, and we'll, we'll keep going, we keep learning, we keep growing, but again, we exist and we respond out of our call to love our neighbor as ourselves. That's our guiding principle. And so we continue to gather in worship and in hope and in the love of God. So welcome one and all as we continue to walk forward together, celebrating the gift of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, let us turn to a thanksgiving for baptism. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! By the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism.
We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to, the, to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. He is risen. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. Then you coaxed up the mountains from the valleys of sleep, and over the earth, <laughs> all to each thing, awake from your slumbers and rise on your wings. Spirit Flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. Wind, winds on the sea. You swept through the desert, you stung with the sand, and you goaded your people with a law and a land. And when they were blinded with idols and lies, then you spoke through your pride. To open their eyes. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. On the sea, you sang in a stable, you cried from a hill, then you whispered in silence when the whole world was still, and down in the city, you called once again. of the wind, spirit, spirit of gentleness, blow through the wilderness, calling and free, spirit, spirit
spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness, wind, wind on the sea. You call from tomorrow, you break ancient schemes from the bondage of sorrow. All the captives dream dreams. Our women see visions, our men clear their eyes with bold new decisions. Your people arise. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from placidness. We wind on the sea. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives with you and with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. in this valley and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied and as had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and the flesh had come upon them and the skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophecy mortal and say to the breath that says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain and they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into me and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost and we are cut off completely. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. 
I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Psalm 140, verses 24 through 34, and then 35 responsibly. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In, vision, in wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, with its swarms too many to number, living things both great, small, and great. There goes the ships to and fro, and Libyan, which you made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You gave it to them, they gathered it. You opened your hand and they were filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. You shall send forth your spirit and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth and it trembles. You touch the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. Our gospel for this Pentecost Sunday comes to us from the gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, uh, this is actually a couple sections that kind of skips through a couple of uh, uh, chapters of John. This is all part of what's known as the farewell discourse. And I invite you sometime to just read John 13 through 17 and hear all the teachings that Jesus gives his disciples around that table, around the Last Supper and the thing, his final uh, discussion with them. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from this Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I'm going to him who sent me, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The gospel of our Lord. <clears throat> Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You now, with all these adjustments and changes and you know, all these things you know, that we do and you know, Zooming and online and all the technical hurdles and obstacles and teething troubles that we have with it all, you know, you know, one of the things I did miss, the time when we were not, anyone was in this space, was the fact that you know, I'd tell my puns and I'd hear laughter. But online, I wouldn't hear any laughter because I was told I wasn't remotely funny.
You know, one of the things I noticed yesterday, I saw a spring football. I'm like, what in the blazes is spring football? But, you know, COVID and everything has caused a number of adjustments and changes and things like that. Some new experiences that come out. Someone brought out silent tennis. It's just like regular tennis without all the racket. And have you ever noticed that a rancher can never move their cattle quietly? It makes sense, cows are herd animals. Again, I'm not remotely funny, but that's okay. Not remotely funny. <laughs> and in person, it's even worse, just ask these people. But what are you hearing and what do you hear and what does it do with you? What are the new things that are being birthed in you? What are the new things that are coming around? What are the opportunities that exist in this situation and going forward? Did you notice the massive bombshell that Jesus dropped in the middle of the lesson? I can't bear to tell you everything. There's still more for you to hear, but you can't hear it now. So I'm gonna send the advocate. Did you notice that Jesus said to us that God is still speaking? That we didn't stop 2000 years ago? God didn't go on an extended vacation or anything else like that? That God is still speaking? That we still have the actions of the Holy Spirit that is coming to us, continuing to advocate, to comfort, to nurture, to inspire? We don't worship dead paper. We know that God is still speaking. God continues to come to us in surprising ways through the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's problematic, isn't it? That we struggle with. But it should also give us a sense of immense hope. Because let's face it, if the word is done, what does it mean to us? We're not first century Eastern Mediterranean Jews. Any of you like that here? You're hiding your age well. It would be absolutely totally meaningless to us. The good news is to be proclaimed. And the good news continues to be proclaimed. Again, none of you are first century Eastern Mediterranean Jews. Somehow that message of Jesus Christ was heard and shared and heard and shared to you. Somehow you got the message. And the message is of life. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly, Jesus tells us. And it's about new life. Now, one of the things maybe that will help us is we are kind of feeling a little dusty and dry ourselves. Maybe we feel like the dry bones. Maybe we are uncertain, like the disciples were, as Jesus is telling them he's going to die and go away. We're not entirely sure what is going on. Well, hey, amazingly enough, I think we kind of see a connection right now that these words are still speaking to us. How are we stepping back out? How are we going forward? Normally, the, one of the lessons we always read in Pentecost, and I decided we're going to do something different so you don't have to try to figure out how to say Pamphylia and Cyrene and all these other names, is that lesson that speaks of when the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples, they went out into the streets of Jerusalem during the big harvest festival, and people from all of these different places and all of these different groups and all of these different areas all heard the good news of God proclaimed in their language. It was like a reverse of the Tower of Babel, you know, where God gave them multiple languages so they couldn't talk the same. God gives these 
disciples the ability to proclaim in all of these different languages for those people to hear. Now remember, these are the ones who are basically staying locked up and hiding. Now part of it was instructions. Last week, we heard on Ascension Sunday, Jesus told them before he ascended, you are going to be my witnesses. But wait to be robed with power from on high. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the age, end of the world. They received it. They go out. And who do they go out to? Everybody who's around them. There's no partiality. As Peter would later proclaim, being called into the presence of a Roman centurion, yes, an officer of the occupying army and a Gentile, Jesus, and Peter was able to declare, truly I know that God shows no partiality. The message, the experience of that Pentecost Sunday for those disciples was to allow them to go out and see that God shows no partiality. That whole laundry list of places was a reminder of the fact that God's will and God's desire was not just for a small geographic area. And they got it. And when Peter proclaimed in the midst of this family, the Holy Spirit fell on them and they were baptized. But that same transforming power of new life was also the power that put Philip with an Ethiopian eunuch. An Ethiopian eunuch, a eunuch, because he would have been excluded from the church because of who he was and what he was. And Philip baptized him too. The message keeps going out and out and out. God shows no partiality. Because God wants us to know about this gift of life, of new life. By the power of the Holy Spirit, this gift is to be proclaimed. And through Cornelius or the Ethiopian eunuch, through whomever and however, you too eventually were grafted onto this vine with this message. This message of new life. And that's, again, where are we? We're kind of dusty. We're a little dry. We're in the valley of the shadow of death of so many. And we are able to look forward in hope. Why? Because if you notice the gift and the promise that Jesus proclaimed is, a, is manifold. One, God proclaims in our midst, in Jesus Christ, that this existence, this life is important. He didn't just wave his hands and say, you're forgiven. And he didn't need some glorified, you know, execution. But he wanted to show us that our existence, our life was important. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. That this life was based on love. Again, how you were grafted onto the vine, how it, the message came to you. It, it didn't come to you through fear and anger. Because someone loved you. Someone cared. Someone embodied that love. And we see that in Jesus Christ. He embodied that love in such a way that he showed us that there was no limits to God love. And even the worst that can happen is not the last thing that can ever happen because God's love conquers death. And again, if Jesus and God's love can break even that boundary that we consider most final, death, there should be no boundaries between one another. And that we are called to love. To love our neighbor as ourselves. And in case we want to start putting in rules or put boundaries in, which we should not do, he reminded us, yes, love your neighbor as yourself. Yep, yeah, okay. But you know, yes, you need to love your enemy too and pray for those that persecute you. 
I give you one commandment that you love one another. That way people will know you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If we embody this love that comes to us and we need it, because let's face it, we need it. We are those dry bones. We need that love that redeems us and our relationships. We need that love that transforms, that love that conquers death, that love that conquers everything, because we need that new life. When we hear the story of the Valley of Dry Bones, this is an, a prophecy of Ezekiel to the people of Israel who were ripped out of their country and put in exile because of what they did. They followed other gods. They put their trust in their might. They put their trust in their alliances. They abused the widow, the orphan, the stranger in their midst. A whole bunch, I mean, you want to talk about lots and lots of verses of the law. You don't do these things. You love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And so the word had to come to them, proclaiming them something new. Brothers and sisters, as we step out, as we seek to find new life, as we seek to get away from the dust of death, as we seek to move forward, the operative word is forward. We can't seemingly try to recapture something of the past. There is no such thing as a good old day, folks. Because how often do we forget everything else that went with it? You know, there's a lot of happy childhood memories I have. But I'm not a 10-year-old anymore, just like I'm not a first century Eastern Mediterranean Jew. We moved on. And more importantly, we follow one who takes us into the future, a one who conquers death and doesn't turn us back to, you know, in the babies, that we're called forward in hope. I know the future I have for you, one with hope. And we see it in the fact that the love of God came and changed things, even the power of death. But this word that comes to us, we need to recapture this sense of loving our neighbor as ourselves. Obviously, the things that happen that put us into this mess are not going to be the things that are going to get us out. How may we recapture a sense of love for one another? How may we continue to be witnesses and, and give testimony to a love that transforms us a love that comes to us despite of us, of grace, amazing grace. And we need that gift that comes to us, that word that comes to us, that life that comes to us. Right now we hear a little bit of it squawking in the back. It's been said that the gift of a child is a reminder that God hasn't given up on the world. Brothers and sisters, as we look forward in anticipation and in hope, may we look forward in love and grace. How may we find that gift? How might we receive that? Oh, that's what we celebrate today. We celebrate the power of the advocate, the comforter, the Holy Spirit that comes to us. And yes, like most church events, we go, well, here's this day when we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, but it's a realization that it's every day. That that gift is ours. Always. Washing us clean, claiming us, empowering us. Shaping us like water often does. And so, as James is baptized... May you remember the gift of baptism, no matter how far long it was. May you remember that water that continues to immerse you, that water that continues to shape you, that gift that is yours each and every day because of the love of God in Jesus Christ. That power of the Holy Spirit to continue to advocate that there is a future with hope and comfort us 
when we need that healing and that restoration, as well as giving us those gifts that allow us to go and show, to embody, however it may be, the love of God to a world that needs it. And so let us remember those promises from a faithful and just God given to us in holy baptism as we go forward. And so I invite you to repeat after me these promises God gave you in holy baptism. And just when we do James' baptism, listen to hear him. I've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. I've been marked with the cross of Christ forever. I am Christ's. Sealed, marked, claimed, loved. May we go forward in hope, sharing that good news and witnessing to all that has been given. And remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen.
you get to see a little bit of it up there on the screens. Otherwise, you, for those of you gathered here, you can turn around and take a look as we watch, as we get James baptized. Yep, come on this side so we can see your lovely faces, or at least 50% of it. Remember, this is being recorded for posterity, so don't say anything embarrassing. I don't follow my own advice in that, but that's all right. That's why it's forgiveness. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through the sacrament of baptism. By water and the word, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Jesus Christ. We are united with him, with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, Peter and Erica, you desire to have James baptized into Christ? Well, as you bring, and you do too, Alice? Good. As you bring James to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities. Bring him to live with him amongst God's faithful people. Bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. Teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. Place in his hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that your child may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others in the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help James grow in the Christian faith and life? Kristen, now you get to make promises for Adam and Ellen, so, you know, promise away. No. Do you promise to nurture James in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support James and pray for him in his new life in Christ? We do. I invite you to rise, those you gathered, for the confession of faith. Confession of faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Amen. God's only Son, our Lord. Conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Thanks. Blessed are you, O God, maker and ruler of all things. Your voice thundered over the waters at creation. You water the mountains and send springs into the valleys to refresh and satisfy all living things. Through the waters of the flood, you carried those in the ark to safety. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery to freedom. In the wilderness, you nourished them in, with water from the rock, and you brought them across the river Jordan to the promised land. By the baptism of his death and resurrection, your son Jesus has carried us to safety and freedom. The flood shall not overwhelm us and the deep shall not swallow us up. For Christ has brought us over to the land of promise. He sends us to make disciples, baptizing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit, wash away sin in this cleansing water, clothe the baptized with Christ and claim your daughters and son, no longer slave and free, no longer male and female, but one with the baptized in Christ Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Who gets to hold him? Mama comes up. Okay. All right. You hear that little step right there is an opportunity for you to get close. <gasps> Are you ready? Okay. Hi there. Oh, here. We'll do this. Okay. So you can see me a little better. So I'm maybe less frightening or maybe more frightening. All right, James, David, Clark, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Let's keep the water from running in. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from, from sin, and lead, raise them to eternal life. Sustain James with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. All right. James, David, Clark, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. And this is dad. Well, actually, Kristen, can you come over? Dad's got Alex. All right, James, here's your challenge. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and hearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Now I got to move out of here. I was, I was probably in the camera angle here. But, brothers and sisters, beautiful Savior Lutheran Church and the kingdom of God, we've added one more, and he's cute. James David Clark. Let us welcome the newly baptized. Yay! <laughs> no, Lily, <laughs> Lily, Alice, you're not supposed to, you know, blow out the candle of your brother. <laughs> you're supposed to let your light so shine. But welcome one and all. And so and you, if she would like to blow it out now so you have someplace safe to put it, you may return to your seats and we will continue with the prayers. It's one of those candles, yes. Well, it's a reminder that life is eternal, right? Hey, hey. As we come to this time of prayer, we prepare our hearts. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hand as an offering to you. For those needing health and healing, especially Dave, Doug, Loretta, Emily, Lissa, Loretta, Don, Olivia, Anne, Gloria, Mary, Frank, David, Barbara, Dick, Bai, Ryan, Jeannie, Pete, Ryan, Jerry, Brenda, Jasmine, Ron, and Sherry. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you. The lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For all those dealing with cancer, especially Nils, Barb, JR, Kay, Sean, Heidi, and Susan. O Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. 
Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For all first responders, healthcare workers, those who care for others, especially Heather, Darren, Allison, Brianna, Betsy, Jennifer, PJ, Lindsay, Colin, Mike, Aaron, Christine, Greg, Cara, Aaron, Matthew, Randy, Emma, Samantha, Michelle, Erica, Nancy, Linda, Susan, Sarah, Joe, Rachel, Ben, Lori, Mark, and Josh. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Janet, Swanson Wells, who was laid to rest in the Memorial Garden yesterday, Betty Jean Butler, Terence DeCourse, Ernesto Felix, Barbara Wagner, Paul Coleridge, Juan Alcala, David Mangus Sr. For all of those who mourn in the Holy Land because of the violence there, and all of those who mourn in India, Bhutan, Nepal, and other places, even the United States, who mourn the deaths due to COVID. The Lord, hear our prayer. Let my prayer rise up like incense before you, the lifting up of my hands as an offering to you. For those facing tragedies near and far, man-made and natural, big and small, the blessings and prayers for those who recover, to care, to rebuild, to heal. For those facing housing, food, health care, and food insecurities. For families in crisis and those feeling alone and isolated, situations that are made only worse by the situation. For the quick and safe distribution of vaccines, for care, compassion, justice, and peace for all. For those who are known only to God that are on our hearts right now. And for all the graduates, we give thanks and we ask your blessings for what they've been able to do. And for all the teachers and instructors and everyone who walked with them along the way. Thank you, God. Hear our prayer. Lifting up of my hand as an offering to you. gift of life and the reminders of God of the life that is given to us. We ask God's blessings on the baptism of James David Clark and all of the new life that comes to each and every one of us, but also for the baptisms and the birthdays, those signs of life that each and every one of us have. And so we, we give thanks and we celebrate the birthdays of Craig Fennell and Craig Johnson, Linda Spain, Lori Moeller, Richard Flonas and Dennis Eskridge. And the anniversary, we celebrate the love of Marcelina and Rick Balka. And for all of those other signs of life, of love, of hope, may we see them, may we share them, may we celebrate them, and may we give thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
giveaways. Forward. Again, we would be, you know, passing plates right now, but we are not. And so I, you know, um, invite you, there's, uh, for those you gathered here, there's offering plates out in the narthex. Uh, again, a reminder, we do receive checks and there's the electronic giving options. There is the possibility again for Sunday dollars to come in through the electronic giving options. There's a pull down uh, possibilities for that, um, as well as any of the other uh, dedicated funds that we may have. And so thank you for all in your generosity. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, in baptism, you were called to let your light so shine before others. I look forward to having everything working and running in the new system so I don't have to let this light so shine before others. But then again, some people would say, given your jokes, Pastor, you're a little bit of a dim bulb anyways, but we shall see. Now I don't look as much like a raccoon. And so as we prepare, we set our tables. For those of you who are here in this space, again, you will be coming forward or receiving communion. As I instructed earlier, please just extend out your hands like a basket and the wafer will be, will be dropped into it. Depending on which side of the uh, you're sitting on or if there's a shorter line, you can cross lines, it's okay. Um, you would turn and go that direction. There is, uh, there'll be a cup of wine and a cup of grape juice. The grape juice is a light color. The wine is the darker color. So you're not surprised by that. There are garbage cans immediately following for you to drop those um, cups into. And, and for those of you joining us at home, plate, cup, you know, wine, grape juice, bread, crackers, simple. The Lord took simple staple items off of a banquet table and said, this is my body and my blood. He is showing us God's presence in the basic and the simple that is with us always. And so as you're prepared, we're prepared, let us continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God gathered around the throne of grace, let us proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give Hosanna to our Lord who comes, the fulfillment of prophecy and promise, the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, the gift that came to show us that this life, our life, was of immeasurable worth to God, for it was worth the life of the Son of God, but also that this life is ongoing and this life is being renewed, and the call to new life that comes from his death and his resurrection. And so we remember on the night in which our Savior was betrayed, he took bread. He blessed it and broke it, gave it for us to eat, said, take and eat all of you. This is my body. It is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me.
And after supper, he took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it for all the drink, saying, take and drink. This cup contains the blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. So may we be fed this bread of life, this cup of salvation. May we be fed you and fed the gift of love that is unconditional, grace that is amazing, and may it transform us and raise us to newness of life with the power of the Holy Spirit going forward, proclaiming Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Risen Christ invites us to the table. Come eat and be satisfied. I invite the communion assistants to come forward and start preparing their tables. For you that joining us at home, uh, you know, if you have someone there to, uh, you know, to take turns giving and receiving, please do so. Uh, but otherwise, you are gathered with us, the body of Christ, the communion of saints. And so the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat, take and drink these gifts given for you.
Why not? There we go. Thank you all and the choir and everybody who made that possible, Aaron and Becky. We serve a beautiful Savior, and the Savior is beautiful because of God's love for us that was shown. Hence the name of this congregation. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Wellspring of joy through this meal, you put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. Amen. Uh, following service, if you have in time, you can, you know, uh, please feel free to, uh, to have some fellowship time to be able to see one another. I just invite you again to do it safely. Uh, for those of you online, there is a time and opportunity to do so on Zoom. And so please, you know, stick around and connect with one another as you are able, where you are able. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Share the good news. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>